So I love food. Oh, that's good. Mm. Mm. And obviously I love food-based YouTube channels, one of them being Epicurious. While watching their four ways to make a breakfast sandwich or whatever it was called video and drooling on myself, I had an epiphany. Mostly being that I was very hungry, but I thought, huh, why not apply this to building weird things? So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So to start this series, we're gonna go with something all of us have or need or need more of or don't have enough of or break or burned or something, sawhorses. And we're gonna do it three levels. We're gonna go DIY, amateur, and a pro level. I've got all three of them sketched up and ready to rock and roll. To get started, we're gonna go with the DIY project. And Sam's gonna build it. I'm gonna what? You really think I'm gonna build a fucking DIY project? All right, fine, I'll do it. For the DIY sawhorse, we're just gonna do a standard construction grade stackable sawhorse. We're just gonna use some standard two by fours that we got at the home center and some standard three inch screws to put it together. This shouldn't take much time at all. Let me show you how to do it. To make these sawhorses, you only need seven 32 inch long two by fours per sawhorse. So to make a pair of them, we're gonna use five 10 foot long two by fours and that'll easily give us all the pieces that we need to make this project. Now the reason I say to use a 10 foot 2x4 for this project is because if you use a standard 8 foot 2x4, when you cut these 32 inch pieces, you're going to end up with a big cutoff that's completely wasted because it's not going to be long enough, where when you use these 10 foot 2x4s, you can get three out of it. So go ahead, spend the extra money, get the 10 foot 2x4, and it'll make it way easier. Now there's three ways that you could cut these 2x4s. You could use a speed square and a circular saw if you're out on a job site or something. You could clamp them all together and then just use a straight edge and cut them all in one go. Or since we're here in the shop and we have it, we're going to use this miter saw station with this fancy stop block that doesn't move because it's jammed up. So now that I got all the pieces cut, I'm gonna take four of these that are gonna be the top and bottom of the two I-beam sections, and I'm gonna give myself a center line so I know where to put the screws. I'm just gonna take my speed square, go to inch and three quarters, and bam. Doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a quick little mark just so I know where I'm going. So as you can see, we're just putting these together, just screwing top and bottom, just making these I-beams just like this one that you just saw me make. Super easy, just take a clamp, put a clamp on either side, run four or five screws through the middle, doesn't really matter. Uh, one thing to be conscious of though is try to offset them on either side because if you have screws that are too long, you may run into each other and it, it's not a big deal, but you know it's just better if they don't touch. All right, so now to put the legs on, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill these ones. Uh, when you're on the end of a piece of wood like this, close to the edge, the grain has a tendency to split out when you slam a screw through it. So we're gonna go ahead and pre-drill. I wasn't too concerned on the top and bottom parts because you're in the middle of the wood and I stayed far enough away from the end. Uh, so there was no issues there. But for these, it's just not worth risking it because as soon as you go, it's fine, I don't need to pre-drill it, the board will split in half like you've never seen. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go ahead and just do maybe three, four screws in each one, probably four. What do you think, John, four? Four. We'll do four. So we're just gonna put four holes. <laughs> Nothing special. And then the beauty of this design is that there's no angle to figure out. You just put it here to make sure you're flush there and sitting against there, and then the angle's already set for you. Great job, buddy. You crushed that. All right, for the amateur project, what we're gonna do is build a folding sawhorse. We have like five pairs of these in plastic. You may have seen them. For this one, we're gonna use some lap joints. They're gonna be a little more sexy, a little less rudimentary. Um, and like I said, they're gonna fold up. We're gonna use some actual tools in this build, not just a miter saw. Let's get to it. Got a basic cut list and a little doodle here together. Uh, we're gonna build this one out of pine as well. 
So I'm gonna need, I think, six more of those two by four by 10. Oh, grizzly bear. So I'm gonna square all of this up. If you don't have a joiner, you can do it on the table saw, which is how we're gonna do it here, because I want this to be approachable. I don't want to see any comments say, John, I don't have any of those tools. I understand. Use the ones you do have. We're going to rip them down to three inches. So first we got to get rid of one side, then we'll flip it, get rid of the other. All of these boards will be three inches wide. So ignore what I just said. You do need a joiner. Sorry. Not sorry. I want these to be actually square. Boob sweat season's coming. So, to put these together, we're gonna do some half lap joints. I got the dado stack and the table saw. A little cross cut sled. We're gonna hit all the end cuts first and then we will do the, uh, the, the, the integral part. That'll, yeah, that. All right, get the cut. So these are gonna go together, blue, 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 like this. Pa pow. <clears throat> really, really basic lap joint construction. Just gotta clean up the lap joints a little bit because I'm not perfect on my table saw. So while I get these cleaned up, Sam's gonna start gluing these up. It's nice about this joint. You do not need much. A lot of face. What the hell's the word I'm looking for? A lot of surface area. Therefore, you get a lot of strength from the glue. It's a pretty joint. We're gonna let them set up for a little bit and then we're gonna screw them from the backside so you can't see it. Real quick, while Sam gets those clamped up, I wanna send a huge thank you out to our sponsor on this build, Bessie, who provided all those amazing clamps you've probably seen. We're using a ton in this build. And if you guys wanna step your clamp game up, I've got a link down below to all the clamps we're using in the shop. Check it out. Thanks, Bessie. So the glue's all set up now, and these are going to hinge to one another, not to the top plate. That means the top plate's gonna to be fastened to one side, and that also means I need to cut an angle. I would do this on my table saw, but because I get so many comments on people thinking, I'm not safe, or I don't know what the hell I'm doing, we are gonna use a track saw. If you don't have one, use your circular saw. Straight up. All right, kids, so this is gonna be our shelf. This is just some uh, leftover three-quarter inch plywood. And to keep our piano hinge from moving around, I'm just gonna throw a little dab of CA glue on it. Come out here. And then I'll put it on the seam. Excuse my extremely rude air compressor. Holding sawhorse. Cute. All right, the last thing I want to do here is pre drill these tops. I'm drilling from the bottom just so I know where my lines are going to line up. At the end of the day, these are, also are sawhorses. But that pro set, whoo! That'll be, that'll be the sex of sawhorses.
It's got blood on it. Sure does. <laughs> Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. So we've got the DIY and the amateur sawhorses done. Those are both awesome. We gave you the stackability of the DIY, the foldability of the amateur. Now we're gonna give you adjustability on the pro. We're gonna make these out of hardwood as well with mortise and tenon joinery, which is great practice for your furniture. And they should have a little bit of a slimmer profile. So let's do a little bit of milling and get to the build. So I'm laying out some joinery here. We're using the Mike Pekovich blue tape trick again. This time actually with blue tape. And all I'm doing is laying out a mortise. This is the back side. I've already got the front side laid out. And instead of having just a random marks in my piece, what I do there is just create a void. And then I know exactly where I need to be hogging out for that mortise. So I'm gonna finish these up and then we're gonna get to cutting some help. Joinery is cut. Now it is time to clean up all of these lovely tenons that we made. So everything fits nicely. We had a pretty good fit off the saw. This shouldn't be very time consuming here. All right, we're all dry. So now all we gotta do is clean these things up a little bit and assemble. News team assemble? Hey, Ron. What's up? Let us spray. So there we go, we've got three different styles of sawhorse with three different features. We've got the stackable DIY style sawhorse, we've got the foldable amateur style sawhorse, and then we've got the extremely overbuilt professional level fine furniture with adjustable height style sawhorse. If you wanna build any of those yourself, I've got a plan down below, super affordable, check it out. And when you're done with that and you wanna see an, another shop project, I've got it queued up right here. I'll see you over there. <laughs>